Now, let's talk a little bit here about gluten. I'll pull up this diagram for you. So let's move you out of the way. So this diagram is just kind of a representation of some of the different ways that gluten can create or contribute to bone loss. And, and oftentimes people aren't aware of this. So there's, there's really, there's two types of, of gluten sensitivity that most people think about, or most doctors think about. Um, one is what's called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. And the other is celiac disease directly. And so it's been very well established that individuals with celiac disease suffer greatly from malabsorption. Um, and so if, you're, if you've got a diagnosis of celiac disease, you probably got that diagnosis because you went into your doctor because you were having either chronic diarrhea or chronic gastrointestinal pain or just um, you know, wasting, you were losing weight. This is how most people get a diagnosis of celiac disease. And so they probably did a biopsy, intestinal biopsy, and they found something called villus atrophy. Again, it's the villus atrophy that causes the malabsorption, which leads to the nutrient deficiencies, which subsequently leads to the um, inability for your, for your body to mineralize the bone appropriately because you're not getting adequate quantities. So celiac disease largely studied, and, and we know directly that it's linked to malabsorption, but there's some new information that's come out recently, uh, published in New England Journal, showing that uh, people with celiac disease actually can produce antibodies against a protein in, in, in this protein. So it's a protein called osteoprotegrin, and this protein prevents the breakdown of bone. And so what the authors of this research study kind of concluded is that not only is so celiac disease being an autoimmune condition, right, where your immune system attacks the small intestine. But what, the, what they're concluding here is that not only can gluten contribute to the development of the celiac disease with the malabsorption, but there's also suspicion that the gluten causes antibodies against osteoprotegrin. And those antibodies, again, they, they destroy a protein that helps preserve your bone. And so where we'll see this, where we suspect this the most is in somebody who's got really advanced osteoporosis at a really young age. So like, like if you're a, a, in your 30s and you're already being told that you have severe bone loss, this is a potential possibility. Again, if you have a pre-existing celiac disease diagnosis, but even if you do have a non-celiac gluten sensitivity diagnosis, again, it's, it's the gluten itself that, that can contribute to the production of these antibodies. And so you don't necessarily have to have celiac disease. So again, this is an autoimmune type of response, right? And so that's what this is referring to. So gluten sensitivity, immune reaction, leading to the antibody production, again, against osteoprotegrin, which then leads to the development of autoimmune disease, i.e. this bone loss that shows up. And generally, this is a more aggressive type earlier onset, whereas, you know, traditionally osteoporosis doesn't show up until somebody's, you know, in their sixth, seventh, eighth decade of life, where it's just not an early person's disease, but where we see advanced autoimmunity or early stage or early onset bone loss, this is something that you definitely want to consider. So maybe you've been told you've got bone loss, aggressive early bone loss, but nobody's ever measured you or tested you for gluten sensitivity or celiac disease. Very important takeaway here. So, we know again that gluten creates malabsorption. It can create an immune response. It can also directly, it can cause inflammation. So, you know, this is one of those things that gluten induced inflammation in and of itself, chronic inflammation, it can damage your tissue and lead to, um, lead to lost resources. So why does inflammation cause bone loss? We talked about some of this the other day, but it drives up cortisol. So I really want this to make sense for you. So it drives up cortisol. What did we say over here? We said steroids increase the loss of calcium, magnesium, vitamin D and increase your blood sugar. And secondarily to that actually increase the risk for the development of fractures, but are known to cause bone loss, the steroids, right? And when we're talking about steroids here, what kind of steroid are we talking about? We're talking about cortico 
steroids. The steroids, the steroids of stress, which are produced by your adrenal glands. When we're inflamed, our body produces more cortisol. And if we're chronically inflamed, in essence, if we are eating gluten every day and we're chronically inflamed from that gluten over time, the cortisol stays high over time and that can drive, again, it can drive that, that bone loss from tissue damage. Remember, cortisol is a catabolic steroid, so it breaks down bone. It also breaks down muscle tissue. So it, it's not just your bone, but also your muscle. And that, and that, again, when your muscle is breaking down, muscle puts pressure on bone. And so, again, there's a law in physiology. It's called Wolf's Law. And Wolf's Law states that bone grows, the, the density of bone grows based on pressure. So if your muscles are atrophied because of chronic steroid elevations or chronic steroid use, then there's less pressure on your bones overall unless you're obese. Now, if, if this is happening in your obese, so a lot of people with gluten sensitivity are too thin. They can't put weight on. Um, but many people are also over, overweight. So depending on how gluten is affecting you, if you're overweight, that is putting pressure on your bone. But if you're underweight and you're malnourished and you're driving that inflammation, you're losing that muscle mass, this is where we're going to see that, that early, again, that earlier onset osteoporosis. So all three of these ways, so we've got, again, immune responses, malabsorption, and then just generalized inflammation can all contribute to a bone loss or a, an osteoporosis over time. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.